Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market and the stock market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. We saw the main markets in the past trading session doing pretty well. All sectors were up 1.89%. The heat was definitely on and it was a very green day. On the 1st of February 2023, the Fed's going to have their FOMC meeting. There's currently a 99.3% probability of a 25 basis point increase in the federal funds rate. And for the first time, we're seeing the probability of keeping rates at the same rate that they are. The same rate as the target rate is. 0.7%. It's pretty small, but it's there. Global markets are reacting quite strongly to this. A lot of people have been calling for the Fed pivot. That occurs in a couple of phases. First a slowing, then a reversal. We're into the slowing phase. Global markets have been rallying. A lot of the strength that we've seen in markets is because of China's reopening. Statistics are now revealing that approximately 80% of China's population has contracted C19 in the current round, suggesting that more than 1.1 billion people have recently contracted the virus. Since 2019, or the end of 2019, right up until today, 673.29 million cases were reported if we actually get another 1.1 billion cases on top of that that's a catastrophe for many years epidemiologists and statisticians have complained that china is not reporting their correct numbers and that's a sentiment echoed by the world health organization the who and we can see in china active cases are currently around 120,000 according to official statistics. As professional smart money investors and traders, we need to be aware of the start of 2023 has been a really rough start for so many people and our beloved global family. People are dealing with a loss of health, a loss of a loved one. If you're currently going through a life pullback, please know that our global family's love and healing thoughts are with you. The most important thing is to understand you're not alone. There's always hope and the sun will come out again. When you're going through a life pullback, it can be really difficult. But just think about it potentially like this. You're gaining strength for the next life rally. Just like the markets, life is always moving in a wave. Life can also be full of so many different problems, but as a community, we never let a problem beat us because we solve it with positive excellence. There's always a way through any particular difficulty that you face. When you feel that the weight of the world is on your shoulders, showing kindness, integrity and gratitude will help to lift that weight. Trading and investing is as much a mindset as it is a technical pursuit of buy and sell levels. Getting your mindset effective is a very, very important thing to do. And especially if you're going through a life pullback as well. Now that we have a bit of a feeling about what's happening across the globe and into market, let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently down 2.94% to 22,470. Ethereum is down 2.56% 2 to 1614. One thing to understand, it takes a long time for things to play out in market and across markets as well. People can read the news headlines and think, wow, that's really bad. The market's absolutely going to melt down and it's going to melt down right now. That's actually not the way that markets work. Markets can take considerable time to melt down if they do at all. Looking across the main markets, 
From the past trading session, we can see that the VIX in fact keeps on coming down. Fear is leaving the market. But we know price is always moving in a wave. It's always going up and down, up and down. And we can see the NASDAQ put in a really, really strong rally. Bond prices came down. Bond yields came up. But they're just kind of in their channel at the moment. They're not doing anything particularly special. We've got a bit of a curving off in bond price rate of increase, but it's still in, this tr in its own trend. When we look at gold futures, gold is absolutely marching forward. We'll have a look at one of those key smart money resistance levels coming up. We can also see that the dollar continues to grind down, but that rate of grinding down is slowing. It's starting to bottom out. Oil prices are keeping on grinding higher, just in their current trend. And when we look at junk bonds, we've had a slight bit of recovery, but the overall trend is a pullback at the current time. Junk bonds are a really good indicator to look at. When we investigate gold, we can see that the 1940 level has been quite strong smart money sell resistance. And gold has been absolutely rampaging up, but that smart money sell resistance is forming a wall. We can see that gold's price has been underneath this smart money sell level of 1940 for about five days. Gold is currently trading at 1927 and 70 cents. Gold has been assisted by the falling DXY. And the DXY has been bounding in between smart money resistance at 102.733 and smart money buy levels at 101.749 as well as 102.060. The DXY is currently 101.992. A lot of people were suggesting that the DXY, the dollar, would just fall off a cliff here. That's not the case. There was internal market support and market structure right there. Also, we understand that gold has a 1940 very high level of resistance and it needs to get through that. It's been trying to challenge it for quite some time. If we start to see the DXY start to rally, we would expect a pullback in the major indices. And when we look at the S&P 500, a pullback to the 3888 mark or around this particular green area is very, very constructive. And we have our smart money sell levels above 4100 up to around 4200. They're quite steep in terms of sell level resistance. But the thing to note is the smart money buy levels down in here, down in this green box, are really, really strong. We know that Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity, and from Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity either. In yesterday's episode, we were talking about this quite strong resistance level playing out above 23,000, up to about 23,200. And we can see price did in fact try to test that, but the sellers were too strong all the way through. Now we're coming up to a smart money buy level at 22,320 down to 22,000 approximately. So we would expect to see a bit of a technical bounce occur here. We'll just leave our little arrow right on current price. And Bitcoin is currently $22,350. Please let me know in the comments, do you think that Bitcoin is going to find support in this particular area just underneath its price? Or do you think it will pass through this smart money and come down and revisit around the 20900 level? Please let me know in the comments. This is really important for you to think through these things. There's a lot to understand when it comes to financial markets. And the most important thing is to know where smart money is actually seeking to buy and where it's seeking to sell. And you can do this through the CTKS method. You can learn it once and apply it for a lifetime. A lot of people have been reaching out and saying, Ken, when's the CTKS method service coming out? 
The answer is as soon as possible, but I want to give you even more value than was discussed in the video. Let's have a look at total crypto market capitalization. We can see, for example, these long wicks. These long wicks indicate that the seller has been coming in and trying to push price down. We also know that when it comes to total crypto market capitalization, this includes Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the alts. So it's the market moving as an entirety. We can see that as Bitcoin came up to resistance because we've just looked at that and it was rejected from that the internal sell levels, we've seen that the entire crypto market has moved down with it. If we consider that Bitcoin could actually find support around where it is right now, maybe down a little bit lower in terms of some long wicks, we could actually see the crypto market continue to grind higher. This is something to just bear in mind, but it has to get through this resistance where Bitcoin is striking resistance around this top area as evidenced by these long tail rejections. Well, you may call them short tail rejections at the moment, but they're rejections nonetheless. Another thing to consider if Bitcoin doesn't hold on to its support level. And one thing we do is that we always consider three dimensions when we're looking at trading inside the market, the market going against us, going neutral or going flat or going for us. And we do that last. If Bitcoin, for example, breaks below its smart money support level of buy levels, it could come down to the next raft of buy levels, which would coincide with market wide smart money buy levels as well. We often get this breakthrough retest and resume, but it's not always as textbook as that especially in crypto, which is really, really volatile. The way to actually look at this chart is to look at Bitcoin's chart as the underpinning chart. You know that Bitcoin has levels of smart money support below it at two levels. It has a resistance level above. What you're actually looking at, because no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, you know that as Bitcoin came up like this, the entire crypto market came up with it. And this is the way things work. And what are you actually looking at now? If Bitcoin continues to grind down and loses that key level of smart money support just below it, this is the one I mean. This smart money support right here. And you can already see that the buyers have been buying up right here and right here. If it loses this, it could fall down to this particular area around 20,900. If that is the case, we could find that Bitcoin comes down to here, falls down, finds support and then retest this zone or maybe gather strength. This is a worst case scenario to actually push through this area. A lot of times pushing through high resistance area comes at the cost of shorts getting liquidated on mass. When we look at the longs and the shorts, the Bitcoin longs are here in green. We're seeing that they're actually falling. Why are they falling? Because they've been liquidated and you can see that in this negative price momentum. What about the shorts? They're not really buying into the whole process at the moment. They're kind of just taking their time. Masterclass students, I explained this chart extensively in TG34. Even though it's the weekend, the amount of liquidations has been crazy, like 10 times, well, 15 times normal weekend trading, especially on a Sunday. We can see 137.83 million in total liquidations across 43,632 positions. And when we look at total liquidations in the past 24 hours, that's our confirmation, 68% long. What about the past 12 hours? About 65% long. What about the past four hours? About 84% long. What about the past hour? Hey, caramba, 94% long. The longs have definitely been whacked. But overall, the shorts have been on the receiving end. And when shorts get liquidated, they cause these big spikes up in price. When longs get liquidated, they cause these big spikes down in price as well.
The alts can temporarily escape Bitcoin's gravity, but they can't permanently escape it. And when we look to the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours, Axie Infinity up in front, up 18.54%. Osmo up nearly 12%. Phantom up around nearly 8%. Followed by Curve, Flow, Filecoin, Immutable X and OKB. The greatest losers in the past 24 hours, LDO taking out the top position down 12.35%, followed by FXS, and Optimism, not feeling too optimistic, down 7.5%. Carver is carving out a negative price action, down 7.54%. HBAR down, Casper down, Solana and Rocketpool. Turning to the top eight, we can see Bitcoin is currently up 9.01%. And that's relative to Ethereum being up about 3.5%. You'll notice this blue line behind Ethereum's price action. That's actually Bitcoin's gravity. And you can see as Bitcoin came up, what did Ethereum do? It shot up. And when Bitcoin came down, what did Ethereum do? It shot down. USDT, USDC and BUSD are all stable coins, but I feel it's a good thing for you to see their fluctuations because stable coins are not really stable and they never have been. When we look at BUSD, it's down about 1%. XRP is up 3.6%, so doing mildly better than Ethereum. And when we look at ADA, it's up about double what Ethereum? Well, if you added the two together, you you wouldn't get ADA's price appreciation. But ADA was very much underwater for quite a period of time. And then the weak become strong and the strong also become weak. This is always on in the markets. Turning to the next eight, we can see Doge is up about 3.6% followed by Solana. Solana dethroned Matic in the past 24 hours. It's making its way back up. Solana has done really, really well. And we can see that that is, Solana is up 3.3%. Matic is over this period of time down about 0.6%. Dot's not doing too badly. It's up 6 point, nearly, well, 6.8% now. And look at SHIB, it's up nearly 12%. Good on you, SHIB. Litecoin is feeling a little bit deflated. It's down around 0.6%. DAI is a stable coin. And Tron is down about a little over 0.7%. We've been talking recently about habits. And something to note, we are all unaware of our negative habits. If you have a positive habit, that's pretty good. That's actually pushing you forward in life. If you have a negative habit, that's actually pushing you back in life. And don't forget, habits are not us. Habits are just habitual behaviors that we've just become unconscious of. That's why it's a habit. In order to master emotional control, rule 734, we must uncover our habits, both positive and negative. The best positive habits that you can ever get come from positive excellence. A positive habit such as kindness, a positive habit like courage, a positive habit like humility, a positive habit like gratitude, a positive habit like inner peace. The more of these green boxes that you can tick and turn into habits, the more wonderful your life will be. That's because every positive habit actually makes you. A lot of people say, oh, I'm just negative. That's just me. That's not you at all. That's a habit. It's also good to keep in mind that your future is created one habit at a time. You can choose. It can be a negative habit or a positive habit. It's completely under your control. As your positive habits and negative habits are completely under your control when you become aware of them. The gaining of positive habits is a really life-affirming thing to take control of your life. And Francisca said, the CTKS habit is, <laughs> the CTKS greed is one of my daily habits. Sorry, Francisca. I look at the CTKS creed on my vision formula and say it out aloud when I look at your daily video. All of those all of these affirmations are so powerful. My favorite part of the creed at the moment is I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. 
That is a doozy. I love that one too. I share these affirmations with family members and friends. They really like this. That's really beautiful, Francisca. Thank you for sharing. Brett said, I really like all results come from the mind and a better mind creates better outcomes. Better habits create a better life. I think it totally embodies the spirit of the CTKS creed. Ken said it well in a previous episode, the creed must be recited with belief and commitment. I think these last lines tell us that, if you will believe, you will succeed. And Brett asks of us a very special question. Do you believe in positive affirmations? Because if you don't believe, then they will not work. But if you do believe, they'll be a wonder of magic. And if you use it daily and believe in it, you'll see the power in it. As Brett says, he asked the question, do you believe? Brett, I really love that focus. Please let us know in the comments. Do you believe in positive affirmations? It's a really good thing to discuss. Thank you, Brett, as always, my friend. Thank you also to Mark for your kind share. Mark says, I win or learn every day. Mark, that is legendary. We put positive excellence into application through the CTKS Creed. We know that all results come from the mind, so a better mind creates better outcomes and better habits create a better life. Therefore, the CTKS Creed is a collection of daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness. Let's get into it. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. I never let a problem beat me because I solve it with positive excellence. If you have family or friends who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do here each and every day, please introduce them to our beloved global family by sharing a video. We'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you tomorrow. Bye for now.